This is an electronic pressure switch. We use them in controls engineering to automate systems, and I'm going to show you how they work in this video, which is sponsored by Danfoss Climate Solutions. You can now improve safety and reduce maintenance costs with Danfoss's electronic pressure switches. They offer a multitude of advantages in comparison to a mechanical pressure switch. Check out the link in the video description to learn more and see the specifications for the entire range. Do check that out, I'll leave a link down below for you. A pressure switch typically has a symbol like one of these but the pressure switch looks something like this. They come in many different designs depending on the application as well as the mechanism for how they work. Some are mechanical and some are electronic. Their purpose is to automatically activate or deactivate another device when a certain pressure is reached. This other device might be, for example, an alarm, a valve, a pump, a fan, an air compressor, or even just to send a signal to a logic controller. In the symbols we just saw, you might have noticed that these are either normally open or normally closed. So the device is normally on or off until the pressure reaches a limit. For example, it could be a low pressure limit to turn something on, or a high pressure limit to turn something off. We often find them on refrigeration and air conditioning systems but also in hydraulics, air compressors, industrial systems, etc. They are a very common device, but again, the type of sensor used depends on the application as well as the fluid being monitored. Looking at the device, we see there is a threaded base for the connection to the system. There is also a hexagonal body so that we can use a wrench to tighten the device securely to the system. We have an internal component to measure the pressure and another part which initiates a control when the desired pressure is reached. Lastly, we have an electrical connection which allows us to automatically control other equipment. So where have you seen pressure switches used or where could you use one? Let me know in the comments section down below. We need to know the pressure of fluids in various systems to ensure optimal performance as well as ensuring safety. If you think of a tank of water, as more water is added, the pressure in the tank increases. The tank might have some pressure gauges which will allow visual monitoring of the system pressure. However, someone would need to manually stop the pump when the limit is reached. If this limit is exceeded, then the pipes will reach their limit and burst. So instead, we could automate this with a pressure switch. We connect the pump to the pressure switch, and then when the desired pressure is reached, the switch automatically turns the pump off. If we think of a simple compressed air system, when the tool is used, air is suddenly leaving the system, so the pressure decreases. And when the compressor starts, the pressure is suddenly increasing. So the system pressure is going to fluctuate. Therefore, we can use a storage tank and a regulator to temporarily store some compressed air and regulate its flow to smooth out the fluctuations and prevent the compressor from running continuously at maximum power. This is a pressure vessel, so we use a pressure switch to automatically turn the compressor off when the pressure gets too high. It then turns on when the pressure gets too low. If you imagine a hydraulic elevator, when the pump forces the fluid into the cylinder, the pressure in the pipe will rapidly increase. The heavier the load, the higher the pressure. A pressure switch can monitor the pressure and stop the pump to prevent damage if the load is too heavy. Let's first consider a simple mechanical version. When we look inside, we notice there is a piston which rises and falls when the pressure in the system changes. Connected to the piston is a spring. This resists the movement of the piston. We then have an adjuster, which can be used to compress the spring to make it harder or easier for the system's pressure to move the piston. Connected to the piston is a shaft with an electrical connector. Above this, we find another two connectors. When the pressure in the system increases, it will push the piston up and this will close the electrical circuit, allowing current to flow. 
a slight change to the design will disconnect the circuit when the pressure increases. So we have a basic normally open and normally closed mechanical pressure switch. Instead of a piston, we could use a diaphragm, which is just a flexible material. And so when the pressure increases and decreases, it will move the arm of the switch to let us control other devices. The problem with these devices is that they are mechanical and so they have moving parts. Moving parts break down over time. So increasingly, we find solid state electronic pressure switches being used, which have no moving parts. With the electronic design, we have a strain gauge located in the lower part and a MOSFET in the upper part instead of a mechanical switch. Obviously, I'm oversimplifying the design for this video. With a mechanical device, we need to physically move the contactor arm to complete the circuit. But we can simply use a strain gauge and a MOSFET instead, which have no moving parts. When the MOSFET is connected into the circuit, it will block the flow of current. However, if we apply a small voltage to the control pin, the MOSFET will allow current to flow. The MOSFET will not allow current to flow until a specified minimum voltage is applied. We can see here that a small voltage is being applied to the MOSFET control pin, but it will not complete the circuit until the minimum voltage level is applied. So all we need to do is find a way to detect the pressure and output a voltage. And for that, we can use a strain gauge, which looks something like this. It's a sensor which deforms under stress. This part is an insulator, and we can see there is also a thin conductive layer of foil looping in a grid pattern, which provides a path for electricity across the surface. When at rest, we can see the strain gauge has a certain resistance, but if we deform it this way, the resistance increases. And if we deform it this way, it will decrease. That's because the material is stretching and contracting. So the length and the width of the conductor is changing in very small amounts. Longer and thinner wires have more resistance than shorter, thicker ones. It's easier for electrons to pass through low resistance materials because they won't collide as much. We know a diaphragm is a flexible layer that bends when pressure in a system increases and decreases. So if we place the strain gauge on this flexible layer, we can use it to measure the change in pressure because the resistance will change. Now, if you think of a voltage divider, if we had a 10 volt supply and two equal resistors, then the voltage between the center and the ground would be five volts. If the top resistor increases in resistance, then the voltage at the center will reduce. We can also connect four resistors to form a Wheatstone bridge. If they are all the same resistance, we would read five volts from the center of each resistor to the ground. However, if we measured between the two centers, we would read zero volts. And that's because the voltage is the same. We can only measure the difference in voltage between two different points. If the voltage is the same between these points, then we will read zero because there is no difference. If we were to replace one of these resistors with a strain gauge, then when the strain gauge deforms, the resistance changes. So we can now measure a small difference between the resistors because one side remains constant while the other side varies. We can then connect these to an operational amplifier, which will basically compare the two inputs. When both inputs are the same, its output is zero. But when there is a difference, it outputs a positive voltage. This voltage is amplified to a higher value. We can then connect the MOSFET to this output. So the strain gauge deforms and controls the MOSFET and the MOSFET controls the output. That is basically how an electronic pressure switch works to control a compressor. The strain gauge deforms, the controller detects this and uses solid state electronics to control the output and control the external device. Check out one of the videos on screen now to continue learning about controls engineering and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok and theengineeringmindset.com.